Or... All right, so today we have Ted Baruti, and I'm just going to set him up here. So uh, Ted is a graduate of North, North Carolina State University of Raleigh, North Carolina. After college, he moved to Norfolk to start his own small sports marketing company, Victory Promotions. After a couple of years of powerboat racing production under Victory Promotions, he served as marketing director for a group of local radio stations in Virginia Beach for five years. From 1996 to the present, he has worked for Norfolk Fest events, which he now serves as CEO. Ted also works with many nonprofit organizations as a volunteer event coordinator and as a board member. Welcome to the show, Ted. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I, you know, I think the thing that I want to do here today is just try to, you know, dig a little bit into, you know, what makes you successful. You know, how are you, you know, pulling off all the events that you pull off every year and kind of just get into the mindset that it takes to, you know, be successful. So maybe we'll start with kind of, uh, you know, like maybe if you can update us on where you are with uh, events and, you know, kind of like, what are you, what are you planning right now? Or, or what, what have you, what are you coming off of planning? What have you just done? Sure, sure. No, great. Um, and good question. No, you know, for us coming off and out of 2022, it was a really, really big and important year for all, everybody, of course, coming out of COVID, but especially those of us in special events. You know, there's a group of us that all stay pretty close together. And some of them are, are small events around the world. And some of them are some pretty big ones here domestically that everybody knows well in America, like the, the Rose Bowl or the Macy's Day Parade. But no matter what level the event or size of the organization, we all really made a commitment to each other and then our communities that 2022, no matter what happened, you know, as long as it could be safe, we were gonna go forward with our full schedule of events or whatever the big parade was or whatever the big music festival weekend was. And we've just kind of locked arms and, and stepped forward into 22. And so it was a little bit, you know, crazy you know think back a year ago there was still a lot of spiking were, were mass events still going to be able to happen could you do it uh, affordably and you know still make profits and if you're a nonprofit like us would the charities still want to work with you would you know volunteers want to still come out and help and all of those factors that we were wrestling with you know from you know 2021 but um we did get our first full season back in action it was a great one um, some new events took place, um, Juneteenth in the park, um, a great celebration that took place. Um, another one in the fall was called Nash Fest 757. We were trying to kind of bring the best of Tennessee here to Norfolk um, for our community here. And then a lot of the traditional events came back, um, which were nice because, you know, an event like the Spring Wine Festival and Harbor Fest, um, our Bayou Weekend, um, a lot of that didn't get to happen in the COVID years or maybe happened in a very modified fashion. So we're kind of continuing that full calendar again here in 2023, really excited to do so. And then um, what's new is just a lot of new layers to those current, that current plan. Um, we'd also teased and tried a new event late in the fall called Gospel Fest that we hope to evolve into more of a true like music festival weekend. So how do you take some of these new and younger events like the Juneteenth and the Nash Fest and the Gospel Fest? How do you make them grow and go? Um, and then how do you add new layers, new excitement um, to some of these ones that are sometimes some of them are 40 years old. In fact, our Jazz Festival and our 4th of July both celebrate their 40th anniversary in 2023. That's amazing. Um, what is like the key skill, I guess? I know you have to be an event, uh, you have to be a, a manager or an executive of sorts, but like, can you break down maybe some of the skills that you have and even some of the skills of your teammates as you, you know, put on these events every year? Yeah, um, you know, whether um, almost like the uh, sort of, um, speaking point in my first answer where no matter what the size of the event, so if you were a, a tournament of roses or you were um, the Washington commanders or you're the small little festival in town, 
um, you know, just about every one of those organizations, you know, you have to have sales, you have to have marketing, you have to have production, um, you have to have programming and entertainment. So those four or five departments are found at any level. It's just obviously the professional sports teams, the Disney's, the Tournament of Roses, Macy's Day Parade are going to have much larger staffs. We have fest events, you know, we're priced somewhere in the middle. We have all those five departments. Um, and we like for each of those departments to be experts and professionals in those fields. So if you come to us and serve as marketing director, um, you know, we expect you to be an expert in that field and programming and so on. Um, but what's interesting about our business and back to the kind of the heart and soul of your question is it is a tough environment and a tough life. It's a very different than being the marketing director or a sponsorship salesperson that may be more of a, a normal business. And I say normal with a big smile on my face in that we're just not a traditional workplace. We work a lot of holidays, nights, and weekends. Uh, we may wear sport coats during the day, but you know we look like camp counselors on the weekends out there producing the, the festivals and special events. And so we almost look for these people and the industry is full of these type of people that almost have a split personality. They like to dress up, they can be professional, uh, but they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. They like to be part of a team environment. And so though you may be that expert in marketing, you really get cross-trained to these other four or five departments and you're definitely gonna be hands-on. You know, you're gonna work a lot of the events and touch a lot of the public. You're gonna be interactive in the community. Um, there's not, um, it's, it's, it's very much um, both a desk job and an out in the field job. Yeah, that's great. And what about like the changes you've seen? Cause if you came in in 96, so that's before the social uh, takeover and you know, things were different. What have you seen in the industry? At, like as a, how, how has social media, the internet, how has that impacted events as a whole? Uh, no, great question. You know, that, that's probably the most dynamic change maybe that we've all seen in all of our businesses, but especially in special events. You know, the, the old days of maybe working with a newspaper, which really doesn't exist anymore, and doing trade agreements for your advertising. And maybe that newspaper even helped pay for some of the programming, like booking a band, or they ran an art contest for you with with local artists in town. Um, all of that, you know, just evolved to where the old newsprint newspaper really doesn't exist anymore. Um, even though we, you know, we may still do some um, digital advertising or, or select promotion um, with an online uh, media outlet like that. But social media has changed everything and, and the digital platforms have really changed everything. Um, for the obvious reasons and how we advertise and how we communicate to the guests, but also how the guests communicate to us. You know, they used to um, give us feedback and we always loved feedback. It wasn't that. And we really worked hard to um, get survey data, um, see our results um, personally from, from our guests and patrons. But, you know, now if somebody doesn't like something or they want to see something, you, you'll, you know it, feel it immediately on, on social media. Um, and they also can, you know, be your best storyteller. So for us, it's been finding that balance of um, uh, allowing the guests to use us as their content and um, being their content. Um, we were worried years ago in the industry you know, think of when the like an iPod came out and everybody started their, using their cell phone for everything. We were like, oh, God, we as human beings don't want to interact anymore. We can at that point, you can put on earphones, put on your favorite playlists and just you don't need anybody else. You don't that you don't need that experience. Um, almost think of, you know, what what we are watching now with, you know, some artificial intelligence and um, you know, any type of virtual reality that's, that's, you know, kind of taking over our lives. But what we've seen is good, which is even though technology continues to change, um, we as human beings still want to be together and we still want to share it together. We may just do it a little differently. Um, you know, we may, we'll still come to the festival, um, 
we may still be at our favorite food truck. We may still want to watch our favorite band, but we just may video that experience and then want to share it out to our, you know, a thousand friends um, or followers. So um, we're really happy to see that technology has not taken away that, that sort of human passion uh, to be together and, and want to celebrate together, unite together. Um, but it, it, it did change um, how we communicate and it's obviously changed how the guest is experiencing their live events. And I guess you have two real customers at this marketplace, really, as I see it. You have a sponsor of a customer who they would need a branding. You know, I'm assuming they want some type of um, messaging that's, you know, deliver to the festival goers and then you've got the actual people that are there to enjoy the live music the entertainment the food um and so you're kind of managing you know somewhat like different audiences can you talk a little bit about maybe what um maybe some of the sponsors how do they how has their role in live events changed if at all uh, over the years no that's that's a great question it definitely ties to um the technology side of things as well. Well, yeah, we we in special events, community celebrations, um, live programming, you know, we all really take pride in wanting to be that platform that all of these different worlds can come together. We can be that vehicle that everybody can, you know, come together and play nice together. Because when you take a politician, you take a business, a, a big corporation, you take the consumer you mentioned, you take a volunteer or a charity, and you put them all together. Um, you know, there's not many places um, they can all play nice and work to the same goals and results um, and kind of match initiatives. But back to your question with the businesses, I think they've appreciated more than ever that ability to touch all of those different groups at once. And so I think um, even more than ever, um, they, they appreciate that platform. Um, and I think, you know, COVID was horrible and, and there's a lot of bad things that are, are still, we're still wrestling with, um, um, with, with the different variants and health alarms and alerts that come out and such. But um, it, it is interesting. I think sometimes, you know, we, they, they lost um, us for a year or two and I think really appreciate having us back and they appreciate access to the consumers again that want to be back. So it's nice to see the demand on both cases. But I think, you know, for these, um, we all know, we're, we watch it in every commercial, every, you know, digital message we see. The, the big sponsors, you know, they have to stand for something now. Your brand, you just can't be a good detergent. You have to be a detergent that's good and affordable and stand for something. And so I think special events, we've been well received again because of that. And we're also a great um, place where they can share in our equity and we can share in each other's equity um, because of that. So they're gaining not just ROI because maybe they're handing out a coupon at our events for that detergent, um, but they can share in our equity of that greater good and community engagement. Um, and just the fact that we are coming together and celebrating all as one. Yeah, that's great. And uh, full transparency, you know, uh, Best Events is a client of Hamilton Perkins Collection. And uh, I just want to say, you know, it takes a big, uh, it takes a leadership position or it takes kind of an innovative, um, you know, kind of counsel, if you will, or a decision making process to take, you know, the approach that we did with the bags and for gifting and kind of finding a new home for, um, you know, those banners. So I'm, I'm just curious if you can maybe break down um, maybe how you all have thought about sustainability, small business, um, upcycling, reworking, reusing stuff. You know, how does that happen? You know, what made you all get that that is a good idea? How did you kind of arrive at that decision? You know, it's funny. We always would um, have programs and initiatives with recycling in mind, even, you know, maybe before it was um, 
uh, more common to do so because we are touching so many people and so much trash or, or recyclable items, you know, at an event, whether it could be a, a cup or a piece of paper and what have you. So, you know, that was always a part of what we do because we do print a lot. The paper recycling was always there. Or could we use inks that are reusable inks um, in our printing? A lot of people don't know. That's one small thing that can be done in the, you know, trying to be green, sustainable efforts within a, especially an event operation like ours. But, um, and, you know, I am not um, paid or pushed to say this in any way, but you've really inspired us. I think, you know, I mentioned sharing in each other's equity. Um, I think, you know, when we got to know each other and we learned your story, we always felt like you and, and the line, um, the, the HPC brand as a whole was, was equity we could share in. Um, and so um, that, and then this idea that you could take a product that sadly is somewhat disposable. You know, for example, we might have a sponsor that's a great sponsor. You know, they're our automotive sponsor and they're wonderful corporate partners of ours. So we're gonna make lots of banners for them out of vinyl. Um, and, but then they change logos or it just gets faded or what have you. And so the fact that we could take um, something um, like the old billboard materials, this vinyl, um, maybe some wrap material that was used for some other purpose of advertising and then turn it into the great products you have, which are in our case, the bags, we've seen them turned into bags, um, was just such a great story. And we don't do it for the story, we do it for the authenticity and because we care and because it's such a great idea, but um, what a great, almost like sort of win, win, win. You, know, you always talk about the, the traditional win, win partnership, but how awesome is it when we can create these win, win, wins and have a third win in it, um, which is this, this wonderful story. And, and it has inspired us just in this past year to go, okay, what else are, are we not um, you know, reusing that could turn into something. You know, we use a lot of plastics that become, or were always just kind of considered disposable because they weren't necessarily recyclable, you know, and with a label of what number they are and how can they be recycled and who can recycle them. Um, and you've really um, inspired us to kind of look within ourselves and start inventorying our assets of what else can we do. And it's a big part of, of who we're trying to become in 2023. It's good stuff. And what about like goals and, you know, the process? I know you're a reader. I know I've seen your library of sorts and I would, you know, just be curious, how are, how do you, I mean, we're at the, you know, top of the year here, you know, everything in January is always um, great. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how long that uh, yeah. train runs until it turns into the rest of the year, but, you know, how do you approach goal setting? How do you, you know, set a vision for your team, for yourself, you know, how does that look? You know, each year's a little bit different, but, um, you know, this year for us, we, we, we created um, five words that we really wanted to be um, kind of the focal point. And, and we don't have to go through the whole list, but they sound small in, in some ways when you just look at the word itself, but, it was really more of a focal point. We, we still love tasks when we're event people. We love our checklists. We love our tasks. We, have, we love the satisfaction of checking things off. But for us this year, especially more kind of modern times and younger people, we thought if we kind of gave more of this um, kind of roadmap or guardrails and focal points, it'd be a little bit better than just the, here's the goal and the 10 objectives. So for example, here's just one of the words. We, we took a kind of an old marketing word, which was positioning. And when we, you know, break out some of these events or a new idea, um, how, how, how can that be leveraged with this idea of positioning? So for example, if, 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 um, and, and mixing a couple stories here together. You know, we always want our wine festivals to be perceived as educational. We don't like them and we don't want them to be known or perceived as, oh, it's just a lot of people who've drank too much 
Um, we want it to be educational. We want it to be good for the industry, for the Virginia wine growers. And there's this whole agricultural component. So when we use the word positioning within the wine festival, it needs to be more about education, food pairings, um, helping the industry. How do we position that event? And what does it take to position that event um, with that, that goal in mind of keeping it high end, um, more educational and not consumption. Um, and and these, these, these guide rails, these sort of five words, if you will, um, have, have really been effective so far, just even in a couple weeks. And at the center of those five words for us this year is people, it's us, it's the, it's the people that work here, it's our partnerships, um, it's the city. It sounds very cliche and it, it is a little cliche, but you know, it still always comes down about the people. Um, we, um, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up here cause I can get off on a little soapbox on this, but you know, we all have the same software. We all just about have the same type of smartphones. Um, you know, in some cases, a tent is just a tent and a, uh, a wine event can just be just a wine event. It's really the people that make the difference. And so that's the focus um, uh, centered in, in, the, in, the, in the center of it all. And we, we also drilled down within that um, just one simple leadership line on everything. Um, that it comes down to leadership versus management, especially internally. We like to look, we like to look to good leaders um, like yourself and within ourselves, we challenge ourselves to be good leaders. But it comes down to this simple leadership is doing the things you don't have to do. Management is doing the things you have to do. In our personal lives, you know, you have to pay your rent. You, um, you know, you, you if, if you, you if you don't eat you you know you're not going to be healthy there's things in life you just you have to do but you don't have to be in shape um that's good self-leadership you'll take good care of yourself and, and stay in shape so things same things happen um here in the workplace we don't have to partner um with organizations like yours that may have great equity that we can share or a great idea or a great platform that we can activate from um and that's um that's, that's a big part. And that always sort of is the string, that line that, that connects any goals for the year or any objectives or any of these sort of um, kind of guardrails, guide points, lit runways we're putting out for the team each year. And I know you're really good with international, or I believe it's international, but you're good yeah. with these professional organizations for continued personal development, continued professional development. Can you talk about some of your, um, you know, your travels as you go and you meet with other, you know, event, <clears throat> excuse me, executives and um, maybe some of the things that you've learned, um, you know, over the past year? Yeah. No, you know, we're, we're still really involved with what's called the International Festival and Events Association, also known as the IFEA. They have an accreditation program that um, certifies event professionals. I think it may be up on my screen now, which is called CFEE. We encourage our young people, the company will pay for their furthering education um, and their advancement, career advancement, um, educational opportunities such as CFEE um, within the IFEA. Um, so no, we're, we're big on that here. And then we also think, you know, it's good for Norfolk and our region when we're seen outside the box. But um, to your point that you were leading to, no, you, we're, we're still big uh, proponents of, you know, you, no matter how old you are, you're always learning and there's always something more to learn. Um, you know, some of us in the event industry no matter how big of an ego people may have in our industry, especially some that are more like the rock and roll side and entertainment side of the business, um, you can be humbled very quickly, whether it's bad weather, um, whether it's, you know, even concert promoters can have bad ticket sales, whatever. Um, you can be humbled quickly, but we do find just keeping that humility that we don't know it all. And there's always something more to learn. And regarding like this nationally and internationally, it, what's neat about our industry is somebody may have already done something um, 
in California that hasn't been done here. So it's okay for us to copy it or copy it and improve it. And even us as an industry, even though we're competitive, it's kind of an unwritten code that somebody may take your event idea or a theme or a concept or a promotion or a giveaway or a, a, a media contest um, and bring it to their city or bring it to their event and just make it better. Um, but we do, we learn a lot um, from these groups. And again, it could be something as small as a trend that's out there um, from maybe something in Europe or the West Coast um, that hasn't hit here us, uh, hit us here on the, on the East Coast. Um, and again, it could be something as small as, um, as like a color or an image. Um, and it could be something as large as a, a promotion or um, a band or a parade um, or a new event concept. That's fantastic. And I know you're a reader. What, what are some of your books that have had, you know, just the most impact on your career and maybe your philosophy? Well, you know, I think I'll probably be a little bit cliche um, uh, in, in some ways, you know, a lot of the Collins books, um, you know, I think knew it. A lot of, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, I think kind of that's sort of their, their go to. Um, but you know, off to my left, your right, there's bookshelves full of, of leadership books. Um, um, you know, but I, I think for, for me and for us, a lot of it is just, again, just that idea of um, always wanting more and learning more and that it can adapt. Lately, you know, or even looking back at 22, I find myself kind of attracted to um, speakers and books. Um, on a, on a little bit of that sustainability. And even though that's kind of maybe a worn out buzzword in some ways, but sustainability when it comes to building teams and staffs and people, um, um, you know, there's been some good books on just sort of that, almost like thinking more infinite um, with your people and um, not necessarily legacy, but, you know, just what, what sort of um, kind of culture are you building and, of, of that culture, what can be left behind and almost grow on its own. Um, and then um, a rereading a good friend's book, the guy who, you know, I quoted with the leadership is the things you don't have to do, manages, management is just doing things you have to do and check things off your box. That's a friend of ours who's now a, um, you know, he's a New York Times bestselling author now with a book called Decide, um, but his name is Steve McClatchy. He's uh, been good to us here. He's trained some of the staff. Um, he's great to, you know, watch on YouTube or, or just even read one of his books. So he's been a great one. That's great. And what about your, your legacy, I, I would say, I guess, how do you want to be remembered? Uh, you know, I, I, I never really thought about it much until just recently. And I don't know just because I'm hitting a certain age or because my body <laughs> feels old. Um, and we're actually starting to plan some projects for 2026. You know, these far long ranging things like, wow, am I, am I going to be alive in 2026? Will I be able to, do I still want to um, be out there in the action then? But um, You'll be here. <laughs> you know, I think, I, I think, um, you know, if, if we could, especially in today's times, I think if I and we could be remembered and we've always been this to some extent, but I think more important than ever, you know, that we were still the group, the organization, the city, the region that um, even through the tough times, stay united, um, still came together as a lot of different people, a very diverse community and came together in unity to celebrate the, all that connects us and, and, um, stay more out of the divisiveness that, you know, politics and life and everything else and um, diseases and COVID panics can, you know, seem to divide us. We're, we're about, we're in the memory making business. So I think we want to be remembered as the people who created all these great memories for the community and united the community. Um, so even if that's a, just one small memory or photo or picture that was taken on the phone, um, 
but then I also I also hope um, the kind of the leadership, um, even Karen Sherberger that was in front of me, a lot of senior staff here that are good friends and we've been in the trenches for a long time. I hope, you know, I think we don't want to be remembered that we also built these good teams and we tried to, you know, kind of find our own greatness and then share it back out, share it with each other, share it with the community. So hopefully that will be something is that if you've worked at fest events and you've, you've kind of put your time in here, um, you know, you're just, you're well known as a, you know, a team player and somebody who wanted to, to give to each other and give out. Well, it's a great way to end it, Ted. I really appreciate you for sharing the pearls of wisdom. Where can the followers, where can they uh, connect with you? Where can they uh, stay in touch? Yeah, no, if they want to, um, uh, website festevents.org has all of the events. Um, you know, we're on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, and such as well. Um, uh, you can find my personal email on, on any of those outlets. Um, I tend to lean a little bit more LinkedIn than you're not going to find me on TikTok, but, um, you know, um, uh, we're very open and accessible and we do love feedback. Um, so we actually encourage people to reach out to us and say, hey, I was just in, you know, Indianapolis and saw this really cool thing. Can we do it back here? Um, we love hearing feedback like that. That's awesome. Thanks again for doing this. No, thank you.